welcome Age of Vintage Society. As the first vamp of the silver screen, studios made sure Theda Bara's private life was Hollywood's best kept secret. She rose to stardom under a shroud of mystery, mesmerised audiences with her dark looks, and then disappeared. So who was the woman behind the femme fatale? Why was Theda Bara discriminated because she was Hollywood's first vampire actress? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The most wicked face of Theda Bara. Theda Bara, Hollywood's first ultimate screen vamp. If looks could kill, Theda Bara had a bulbous nose, an overbite and a squint, yet she was a star of silent movies. Before the golden age of Hollywood in the 1930s, an altogether darker palette engulfed Tinseltown, mostly thanks to actress Theda Bara. From Mae West to Eva Green, the cinema archetype of the femme fatale has fascinated and frightened audiences since Hollywood's golden age. Silent film actress Theda Bara, the silver screen's very first sex symbol, hypnotised filmgoers with her evil stare, vampy makeup, and scandalous outfits. In 1918, the silent film actress Theda Bara was, however briefly, the third most popular star in America, ranking below only Mary Pickford and Charlie Chaplin. Of the 42 films she made in her four year career at Fox, she cranked out about one film per month. She was typecast as a heartless man-eating succubus in nearly all of them. Without access to the films for which she was most celebrated, such as Cleopatra and Salome, it's difficult for viewers today to understand why she was such a hot ticket back then. The films that remain most likely don't do her justice. A Fool There Was was her very first starring role, made when she was just learning how to act on screen. Her portrayal of the vampire, an otherwise unnamed woman who orchestrates the downfall of any man she chooses, drove a scandal-hungry audience wild for her titillating brand of perversity. She slithered, she seduced, and she shocked. It may seem quaint now, but a fool there was inspired moral outrage over, shocking at the time, into titles like Kiss Me My Fool and British censors rejected it for depicting an illicit sexual relationship. That controversy only helped make the film more popular, and secured the future of its studio, Fox Pictures. Bara quickly became one of Hollywood's biggest names, and the first to be marketed based on her sex appeal. Typecast as a seductress by Fox, she was known for dressing in outfits that are still shockingly revealing a practice Hollywood would later ban with its 1930 production code. East Lynn was an atypical non-vamp role for Bara, based on a play already considered melodramatic and dated by the time the film was made. The Unchastened Woman and Madam Mystery were poorly received and ultimately failed attempts at a comeback. Both were made long after her studio dropped her in 1919. For moviegoers of the late 1910s, Bara's vampy screen performances in those now lost films apparently served as the celluloid embodiment of the dangers and pleasures, and it is still possible to grasp some of her primal appeal. The memorable publicity shots from A Fool There Was ooze with unwholesomeness. On her images, raven-haired starlet strikes a variety of poses while lounging alongside a man's skeleton. The images seem to suggest that modern women on the cusp of political and sexual emancipation might be up for just about anything. In the over-the-top publicity shots from Cleopatra, made two years later, Bara let herself be photographed topless, save for a skimpy coiled snake bra. One of the earliest queens of the silent screen, Theda Bara, dominated the moving pictures through the mid and late 19s. Bara was not the first to introduce female vampires to the silver screen, but she is probably the actress best remembered for this. The Vampire, among a few other films, showcased a female vampire in various forms, but Bara made such an impression that many often confuse her as the first. Bara's name has now become synonymous with the term vamp. 
Despite her fame and notoriety as the movie's first sex symbol, no biography of the original vamp has ever been written, even though Bara threatened to pen her own, because nobody ever wrote a true word about me. Finally, someone has. Bara had one of the most bizarre and colourful careers of the silent era, and scores of other hit films before vanishing mysteriously from the screen. Now, let's find out how a nice Jewish girl from the Midwest became Satan's handmaiden, scandalised a nation, and abruptly fell from the heights. She had an exotic backstory. If you were alive during the golden age of silent film, it probably seemed like Theda Bara emerged from the mist to hypnotise you from the big screen. Theda Bara, an anagram for Arab death, Bara was presented to the public as daughter of an Arab sheikh and a French woman, who had been raised under the shadow of the Sphinx, and the studio even made her speak in a fake accent. In reality, Bara was a Midwesterner named Theodosia Goodman, who had been to neither France nor Egypt, but it was thought the more exotic stories would play better with the press. The truth, however, was much different. She was born on July 29, 1885 in Cincinnati. She was the daughter of Bernard Goodman, a Jewish tailor from Chorsel, Poland, and Pauline Louise Francois de Cobbe, who was Swiss or French descent. Bara had an older brother named Mark and a younger sister named Laurie. As a teenager, Theda was interested in the theatrical arts and once she finished high school, she dyed her blonde hair black and went in pursuit of her dream. Her stage name was Theodosia de Coppe. While trying her luck in various theatres, she spent two years studying at the University of Cincinnati before dropping out in 1905. At age 18, she decided to become an actor and moved to New York City. Seven years later, she became known throughout the country as the sex goddess of the silent screen. Her fame began in 1915, when director Frank Powell discovered her and asked her to star in a Fox Film Company production titled A Fool There Was. Realising that her career on the stage was not progressing, she reluctantly accepted. It's not known why Theda was initially cast by Fox in these early films, but it's been claimed she was getting old and had no money, making her willing to work for a pittance. Not long after she starred in A Fool There Was, about a single woman with a love of velvet, fur and jewels, who seduces a married man and rinses him for every penny, men and women were captivated by this silver screen newcomer, who seemed to have appeared out of nowhere, to cause havoc among their favourite actors and actresses. Magazines of the time referred to her as the Arch Torpedo of Domesticity, the Queen of Vampires, the Wickedest Woman in the World, Purgatory's Ivory Angel, the Devil's Handmaiden, and the Priestess of Sin. She made many for the Fox Film Corporation, with titles like The Eternal Sin, The Blue Flame, The Soul of Buddha, Purgatory's Ivory Angel and Carmen. In 1915, Fox produced silent drama Sin, with Theda Bara starring as Rose. In order to play up Theda Bara's image as a vamp, Fox Film Corporation publicised the film with the tagline Sin with Theda Bara. Upon its release, Sin was an enormous hit with audiences, and Bara earned generally good reviews for her performance. In spite of its success, the film was banned in Ohio and Georgia due to its themes of suicide, lust, Roman Catholic sacrilege, and love triangles. While Bara was one of the biggest stars of her age and starred in over 40 features between 1914 and 1926, the vast majority of her films were destroyed in a fire at Fox Pictures Storage Vault in 1937. The only others that remain are 1916's East Lynn and 1925's The Unchastened Woman, and around 20 seconds of her performance in 1917's Cleopatra. Her large black eyes, accentuated by heavy coal makeup, set off her rounded, dead white face. Elaborate props such as a tiger skin rug and a long gold cigarette holder embellished her exoticism as did her penchant for veils, crowns, large hoop earrings, and bronze bangles. With her long dark hair and voluptuous figure draped in low-cut gauzy gowns, the vamp perpetuated a familiar stereotype of European passion and exoticism. 
At the same time, the character created a popular image of women as sensual yet powerful. The vamp dominated and triumphed over men and contrasted sharply with the clean-cut waspish characters portrayed by Mary Pickford and Lillian Gish. Barra scandalised the moors of the middle classes. Meetings held across the country put the burgeoning film industry on trial and focused on Theda Barra, the vampire, the wickedest woman in the world, but her popularity was unstoppable. She had a salary of $4,000 a week. Barra defended her role. The vampire that I play is the vengeance of my sex upon its exploiters. You see, I have the face of a vampire, but the heart of a feminist. But she also worried about the image she perpetuated. I try to show the world how attractive sin may be, how very beautiful, so that one must be always on the lookout and no evil even in disguise. Besides, she added, whenever I try to be a nice, good little thing, you all stay away from my pictures. With the advent of the US involvement in World War I, she helped raise hundreds of thousands of dollars in war bonds. However, by this time World War I was also diminishing the public's fascination with wicked characters. Barra's image was beginning to lose its appeal, and typecasting made it difficult for the public to accept her in more diverse roles. Fox refused to renew her contract after 1919. More significantly, by 1920 the movie industry had reached a larger public. Filmmakers such as Cecil B. DeMille cleaned up the vamp image for a wider audience. No longer menacing or mysterious, stars like Clara Bow and Louise Brooks exuded a cleaner image of women. After going on a European cruise for a rest, Barra returned to Hollywood expecting that her past box office clout would guarantee being hired by a studio. However, her vamp image was so ingrained in people's minds that studios were reluctant to take her on. Tired of being typecast, Barra briefly resumed her career as a stage actress in 1920, having allowed her contract to expire. In her private life, for instance, Theda Barra reportedly suffered frequent judgment and discrimination. Judging from the letters I have received, the popular idea of my home life was indeed a lurid one. I was generally visualised as spending Sundays and holidays undulating snakily about my apartment, or whiling away my free time stretched sinuously out on a tiger skin, gazing inscrutably through the smoke of my heavily scented cigarette. Though she received countless letters from fans and admirers, many criticised her publicly for her despicable behaviour, even though it was entirely fictitious. Some fans failed to distinguish Barra from her fictionalised roles. One bitter moviegoer wrote, It is such women as you who break up happy homes, Barra replied. I am working for my living, dear friend, and if I were the kind of woman you seem to think I am, I wouldn't have to. Another, a criminal defendant, claimed that he killed his mother-in-law after viewing one of Barra's films. She was Hollywood's first vampire actress who received 1,000 marriage proposals and even had fans' kids named after her. Her movies ran continuously, sometimes playing six times a day. Thousands of lusty male fans bombarded the studio, asking for her hand in marriage, but she had already had her head turned. She wed British-American director Charles Brabin in 1921, but the couple never had children. Theda never appeared in a talkie, with her career coming to an end in a 1926 short film, 45 Minutes from Hollywood. In April 1955, Theda died from stomach cancer, and is now buried in Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Her smouldering eyes and mysterious allure captivated audiences worldwide, but Barra's off-screen reputation suffered tremendously as a result of her risque performances. Because the film industry was young and Barra played her role so convincingly, many people struggled to separate fiction from reality. Theda Barra created with her characterization of the vamp a seminal and enduring image of female sexuality in American popular culture. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the relationship of Theda Barra? 
To many, however, Barra's talent was attributed to and partly overshadowed by her dark, entrancing and seductive persona. <laughs> 